Okay, so today we're going to look at PIR sensors and how we can switch them. Let's have a quick look at the switch in now. In the off position, the contacts are between common and L2. In the on position, the contacts are between common and L1. Knowing that is quite important when it comes to switching a PIR, here's a little video. Okay, so make sure your switch is at the top, right way around. And the switch in the off position, test between common and L2, you'll get a beep. Switch it on, test between common and L1, you'll get a beep again. No beep between common and L2. Off is common L2, on is common L1. So here's a circuit without the PIR added. This is just a switch. So we have the power coming in. In this case, it's from a B6 Type A RCBO. Lighting circuits now required RCD protection. Live comes into common in the switch, leaves L1 and goes to the light. So that's an outside light. You have to physically switch it on or off. And adding the PIR, passive infrared, will give you some more control over this light. You don't have to be there switching it on and off. Somebody comes to the door, the light will switch on automatically. So here we put the PIR between the switch and the light. And you can see the PIR has a live, a switch live, a neutral, and an earth, a CPC connection. And this is the most basic form of switching for the PIR. Live comes into the common, leaves on the L1, and goes to permanent live and the PIR. This energizes the PIR. When it senses some warm movement, it'll switch on power to switch live, which in turn will go on to power the light. But obviously you need your neutral connection as well, and the CPC is your protective conductor. So with this type of switch, you can have it off, common to L2, or you can have it switched to sensor, common to L1. But one thing you can do with this is have the light permanently on. It's always on a sensor. Sometimes it's nice to have that functionality of being able to switch a light on permanently. In this example, a fake comes in on the common and leaves the common to the permanent live in the PIR. And from L1, we take a feed to switch live in the PIR, which then energizes the light. So in the off position, the light is operated just by the sensor. In the on position, the light is permanently on. The issue with this setup though is you can't actually switch the whole thing off. It's either on sensor or it's permanently on. To add more functionality, we need to add an extra switch. There's lots of different ways of wiring. Sometimes you get the neutral at the switch, which I've indicated here. You should always have a CPC at the switch. You should run a CPC to every point. So with this setup, we have the feed coming into common on the first switch. And on L1, it leaves and goes to the permanent live in the PIR. And from that same L1, we take a feed to common in the second switch. And from L1 in the second switch, we take that to the switch live. So what happens here, we can actually switch the whole thing off now. With the first switch in the off position, everything is off. There's no power going to the PIR or the light. If you switch the switch on, L1 becomes energized and that'll take the permanent live on to the live in the PIR, and you'll have your sensor function. And as you can see, when the first switch is on, we're taking the feed onto the common on the second switch. And when we switch the second switch on, that'll take a feed to the switch live in the PIR, and you can have the light permanently on. So in this setup, you can have everything off. You can have it on a sensor, so it automatically detects, or you can have it permanently on. So you've got good functionality there. There's several different ways of wiring. Let's have a look at another way. This one's very similar as well, but we've looped everything through the switch this time. But it's the same principle. You can follow the flow power around to how you get it all off, how you get it on sensor, and how you get it permanently on. I've also indicated here the number of cores that you would need in the cable. So the actual supply, that would be a two core on Earth. We need a permanent live, the neutral, and the CPC. Then going to the PIR, we need a three core on Earth because we need the permanent live, we need the switch live, we need the neutral, and we need the CPC. In three core on Earth, you've got the brown, black, and grey. The brown would be a permanent live, the black would be a switch live, which you would add some sleeving to each end. 
some brown sleeving to indicate it's a live conductor, a switch live conductor, and the grey cable would be the neutral, which we would sleeve with blue to indicate that it is the neutral. The PIR is not directly feeding the light, it's going via the switch, and we would run a two car in earth to the light, because we just need the switch live, neutral, and CPC. But depending where the cables are at in the building, there's certain cables you should use. Indoors for your permanent fixed wiring, you can use twin in earth or three core in earth. If you're running cables outside, twin in earth is not suitable to be run outside. It's not UV stable. The sun would eventually make the PVC insulation get brittle and weak. Outdoors if you're running cable, surface mounted cable, you want to use flexible cable, or like a rubber flex. If you're planning all this from scratch, it's nice to get as much of the cable hidden away as possible. You don't have too much cable running on the outside of the building, which can be the case when you're adding lights to an existing installation. If you couldn't run as much of that as possible inside, in twin and earth, to the various junctions where you need it, then that can be plastered away. So you can't see it in the inside and you can't see it on the outside. You've got to follow the safe zones though when you're doing that. Or you might run a feed to the outside, then you have to join onto it. You have to use the correct enclosures and the correct cable. It's nice if you've just got the PIR and you've got the light fitting. You don't see any cable. That's the neatest and cleanest way of doing it. Or you might have to run some flex between the two. Or you might have a junction going onto the PIR and onto the light. And again, you've got more cable. And if you've only got two corn earth cable, then you've got more cable. If you do have to service mount cable and you're feeding a PIR, you want to get some four core flex. So you'll have your switch live, permanent live, neutral and CPC. And you won't have this situation here. Two cables going to the PIR. You've got your live, your neutral, your CPC in one cable. But you need the switch live as well. Often in that situation, people are tempted to use the CPC as one of the live cores. Can't do that. Don't use the CPC as a live core. And lighting manufacturers don't make life easy for us. They often just have like a rear entry into the light fitting. Which is fine if you're drilling through the wall and bringing the cable in that way. But quite often, you've got to run the cable along the wall and into the light fitting. And more often than not, they don't have any access for this cable. Sometimes they do. So if you're careful where you position it on the wall, mount it over the vertical mortar joint, you can just take away a little bit of the mortar, get the cable in that way. It's not ideal, but what are you going to do? Manufacturers should give us better cable entry. So a cable entry can be an issue. You've also got to think of water ingress as well. If, you, if you've got cables coming through the wall, they've got to enter the enclosure somehow. So you have to think of water ingress. There's often a rubber grommet to help prevent water ingress. But I find a little bit of silicon helps there as well. Keep things nice and watertight. So check what you've got in place. What's wired at the moment. If you're adding to an existing installation. And then make sure the cable that you're running is correct for the environment. And got the correct number of cores in it. It is a little video of the PIR in action. So first switch, this puts it onto sensor only. It goes off there. Let the wave comes back on. So we know that we've got the sensor on. Sensor's working. Second switch, that just puts it permanently on. And we switch it off. The first switch, it's completely off. Anyhow, I hope you found this of some use. And thanks for watching.